Imagine this, you walk into a holiday gathering feeling calm and prepared. 30 minutes later, a single comment from a family member about your job, your choices, or why you're still single sends you from zero to 100, and suddenly you're 15 again defending yourself at the dinner table. That intense, instant emotional reaction is not just you being sensitive. That's your brain hijacked by its emotional memory. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and in this video, we're going deep into the why of family triggers, examining what's happening in your brain, and giving you four simple steps you can practice this week to create an emotional pause button. You're not trying to avoid family, you're reclaiming your peace so you can actually enjoy the holidays. So let's start with why family triggers are so powerful in the first place. Your family knows exactly how to push your buttons because in many ways, they installed those buttons. From childhood through adolescence, your brain was learning which situations felt safe and which felt threatening. Your family members were there during this critical wiring period, which means their voices, their facial expressions, even the way they sit at the table can activate old emotional patterns faster than almost anything else in your life. Why? Because your amygdala and hippocampus, two key parts of your brain's emotional memory system, work together to store not just what happened in the past, but how it felt and where it happened. Your amygdala is your brain's emotional alarm system. It tags experiences with feelings of threat or safety. Your hippocampus adds the context, linking those emotions to specific people, smells, and environments. So when you walk into your parents' house and smell that familiar food or hear that same tone in your sister that she had since you were 12, your brain doesn't register it today. It retrieves a snapshot from years ago. That's called state-dependent memory, and it's why your body reacts before you've had time to think. The amygdala recognizes the emotional cue, the hippocampus fills in the setting, and together they recreate the same stress response you felt back then. You're not being immature, your brain is replaying an old program, but you can interrupt this pattern. These four steps are your complete multi-layered emotional pause button. Each one is designed to interrupt the emotional surge and widen the space between the trigger and your reaction. So let's look at how. Step one is to build your emotional awareness muscle. This is the most important step because your ability to identify and name what you're feeling in real time is your primary tool for staying grounded. When you're in the middle of a stressful interaction, your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain responsible for rational thinking and emotional regulation, starts to go offline. Your amygdala takes over and you're operating from your emotional brain rather than your thinking brain. But here's what the research shows. When you can name the emotion that you're feeling as it's happening, you actually activate your prefrontal cortex and calm down your amygdala. This is called affect labeling, and it's the click of this pause button. It's one of the most powerful real-time regulation tools that you have. Now, to build this skill, it helps to do some preparation work. Think about your typical family gatherings and write down a few situations that tend to be hard for you. But here's the key. Don't focus on predicting exactly what will happen. Your family might surprise you. They might do or say something similar, but not quite the same. The goal isn't to script out every possible scenario. The goal is to practice identifying what you actually feel when these things get tense. So instead of writing, my dad will criticize my career, write, when I feel criticized, I notice my stomach drops and I feel inadequate. Instead of, my sister will make that comment, write, when I feel dismissed, I notice my face gets hot and I feel angry. You're training yourself to recognize your emotional and physical responses so that when something stressful happens, even if it's not exactly what you expected, you can catch it in the moment and name it. And this is where the specificity matters. You need to identify the actual emotion that you're feeling and not just bad or some type of way. Are you feeling angry, hurt, resentful, anxious? The more precisely you can name it, the more your prefrontal cortex can help you regulate it. 
This kind of self-awareness work is exactly what month one of my new Shine, a guided transformation journal focuses on. On page 13, there's a week one challenge with an emotion wheel that helps you get specific about what you're actually feeling. Because here's the thing, the better you can identify and name the emotion, the better you can get at managing it in real time. The journal is a 12-week program that takes you through self-awareness, managing defeating thoughts, and building sustainable habits. And you can pair it with an optional audio companion that acts like a coach in your ear with deep dive episodes and mindfulness meditations for each week. Now, if you really want to get good at doing emotion identification in the moment and don't want to carry a full journal with you to a family gathering, I created the Essential Tools card deck. It includes cards for all six predominant emotions, happy, fearful, hurt, sad, inadequate, and angry, plus subcategories that help you pinpoint exactly what you're experiencing. You can keep the deck in your bag or your pocket, and then when you feel triggered, you can pull it out in the bathroom or in your car and identify exactly what's happening. Both the journal and the card deck are linked in the description below. The power of this approach is that it makes you adaptable. You're not waiting for specific triggers and then wondering what to do when something happens. You're building a skill that works whenever emotions show up. That's the kind of emotional flexibility that actually protects you during these unpredictable family dynamics. Okay, so all of that was step one. Once you've named the feeling, the next step is to calm your body so that your brain can follow. You have to exit that high alert state. You do this through a physiological reset. Take advantage of your body's built-in calm switch, the parasympathetic nervous system, by focusing on your breath. Your breath is always with you, so it's a great tool inside of your circle of control. Try this simple two-part grounding reset. We'll do it together, but let me explain it first. You'll inhale through your nose for a count of four, hold for a count of two, then exhale through your mouth for a count of six. The longer exhale is the key here in triggering the relaxation response. Then we will repeat it two more times. Then after we breathe, we'll do the second part, which is a mindful observation. Here we go. You want to sit up straight and you can close your eyes if you like. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two. Exhale, two, three, four five, six. Again, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Now, just let your breathing go back to its normal rhythm. Next, look around wherever you are and silently name five things that you can see right now. For me, it's actually hard to see because I've got this big light, but I've got my light. I have the, a pillow on the floor, a vase with a flower in it, my camera, a microphone, and one more thing, I have a panel on the wall. This attention to your environment pulls you back into the present moment, out of the emotional replay that's going on in your head. That's step two, a grounding exercise to calm your body. Once your body is calm and your amygdala is quiet, your prefrontal cortex is back online. You've created space for a conscious choice. That conscious choice is step three, reframing the story. And it's about filling this pause that we've created with a new narrative. This is the skill of cognitive reappraisal, taking the same event and giving it a new meaning. When your amygdala shouts, they're attacking me, your calm prefrontal cortex can pause and reframe. They're not attacking me, they're expressing their own anxiety. Or, that comment isn't about my worth, it's about their discomfort with their own choices. Reframing doesn't excuse bad behavior, it frees you from taking it personally. And remember, writing your reframes down, either in your phone if you're on the go or in your journal, reinforces these new, healthier neural pathways. Your brain is storing the updated version of the story instead of the old one. Even with the best of intentions, you'll still get triggered sometimes. 
but you can shorten the time that it takes to return to calm. That's step four, recover and reset. This step is about reinforcing the pause today so that it can become the automatic, unconscious default response of tomorrow. When you notice you're activated, step away if you can. Take a slow breath, feel your feet on the ground, and ask yourself one reflective question. What did I notice, and how did I return to calm? That single moment of awareness turns a trigger into a training rep for your brain. And this is neuroplasticity in action. Each repetition of calming down strengthens the circuit that makes it easier the next time. So instead of judging yourself for reacting, congratulate yourself for recovering. That's the new measure of progress. So here's what I want you to take away from this. Family dynamics might not change overnight, but your brain can. The first time you successfully use just one of these steps this holiday season, you will have won. The goal isn't to never get triggered. The goal is to develop a stress response that teaches your nervous system a calmer script. With practice, these strategies become automatic. You won't have to think through every step. Your brain will start doing it on its own, and that's when you've achieved genuine resilience. Next time, we're shifting our focus from internal regulation to external connection with a quick fix for your relationships. I'm going to show you how a five-minute practice of presence can rewire your brain for better connections. Be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. And let me know in the comments, which family trigger are you going to use your new pause button on first? I'll see you in the next video.